All right. So, you know, I've been telling you for days now, things are getting worse in Pacroft. It's getting like, this is Putin really wants this real estate. And uh, I was watching uh, Greg Kerry last night, or just his last video that just came out here. Uh, and he's, he was showing you visually what's going on. So we're, we're, I'm going to meet, I'm going to talk with Greg here now. And let's just talk about Procross and what you saw and what's happening. You said it's the most vital city. Yes, sir. Can you, can you tell us why it's most vital? Like, what is it about the city? Why does Putin want it so badly? Pokrovsk is vital because the main supply road, and this is not operational security, this is not private information, mm -hmm. this is yeah, public. It's, it's, it's public. Yeah. The main paved highway coming in to support both the eastern front and the southern front, or the southeastern corner, which would include Karakova, which is very hot, mm -hmm. comes through Pokrovsk. And mm -hmm. just... For people to understand, Pokrovsk typically is a city with a population of 62,000 people. It is not mm -hmm. small. It's a good size, mm -hmm. small city. Mm -hmm. It's more than a town. And it is the crossroads of the supply lines, heading east and heading southeast. People may say, okay, well, we lose Pokrovsk. There are other little roads that you could go through. That's off the table, guys. It is very rural. The roads are either in horrible condition with asphalt or concrete, or they mm -hmm. are dirt. Today is August the 29th. It's 40 mm -hmm. degrees Celsius down here, about 104 Fahrenheit. That's why I'm glistening. Yeah. But very quickly, the weather is going to change, and those roads will be impassable. Additionally, heavy equipment tanks tractor trailers not happening that paved road is vital for ukraine supply line okay so if they can hold this before that then they're in better shape and if russia gets it before that russia's in better shape and ukrainians have to back up is, is that is that a fair assessment oh it's a very fair assessment i can tell you yesterday when i was in pokrovsk um i have never seen a city change so much as Pokrovsk. Yeah, so, so this is what I was going to ask you about. Tell us what you saw that made you go, wow, this is this is different. Okay, so Pokrovsk is a hub city being a supply route. Think about any war movie you've seen. Those cities are very active, lots of civilians, lots of businesses, lots of mm -hmm. infrastructure flowing through. Imagine mm -hmm. all of that in your mind. Now try to imagine that same city, a ghost town. The only thing mm -hmm. I see, military moving through the city, not operational security, it's open information, evacuation mm -hmm. signs everywhere. Every business I saw closed. Wow. One may say, okay, well, Greg, maybe it was closed before. No. Pokrovsk is a city that Zhenya and I work out of nonstop. We know mm -hmm. Pokrovsk. We know the businesses. We support the businesses. We know what is open. We know what is closed. I can tell mm -hmm. you from my witness yesterday that Pokrovsk has at least taken 50% more damage infrastructure, buildings destroyed, businesses destroyed than when I was just there six weeks ago. It is shockingly different. Secondly, we're driving around Pokrovsk and our drone detector is going off. Drones are over our head. They're already in the range of the Russian military and they're unstoppable guys. And they're just flying everywhere. That is why the major call for the evacuation happened. Not so much because now it's reached artillery range or they can sling glide bombs, but the FPV drones cannot be stopped. They can be counteracted but they can't be stopped so for civilians that's deadly civilians are not yeah, yeah. running around with drone jammers or drone detectors right, right so is it the drones doing the damage now or was it artillery it's that's it's in art range that's doing it's artillery that's destroying these buildings but now well, the drones can see everything now and can start to even do some damage themselves dropping things if they if they wanted to right I'm, drones or, or cover ranging, the city now or 100 for the artillery or whatever like finding the points to hit for the artillery. Absolutely. 
they put them in the air, they find their artillery, but, but they know. I mean, it's 10 kilometers from where Russia is to Pokrovsk. Mm -hmm. it, it's five miles. It's nothing. And yeah. they throw the drones up, and they're hitting indiscriminately now. Um, evacuation billboards everywhere. And as I was sharing with yeah. you and others, I know these businesses have closed within the last six weeks. What kind of businesses am I talking about? Every business, uh, hardware shops, every restaurant, pizza stands. We literally went by a guy taking down his restaurant signs and boarding it up. The central street wow. of Pokrovsk is a ghost town, and that was the hub of activity. I can also tell folks there is a grocery store, grocery store chain here in Ukraine called ATB. In Ukraine, we call it ATB, but with English, ATB. ATB, like a Piggly Wiggly or Kroger, whatever, it has, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how they work, but they have maybe some kind of contract with Ukraine or an agreement. They are always the last business to close in a town that is under assault always and what they wow. do it's like the oko gas stations the vogue gas stations and the atbs they sandbag them board them black them out hide them so mm -hmm. people can at least get fuel get to a gas station and have a grocery store i can mm -hmm. tell you that in Kherson, for example there were five atbs working everything else closed and a couple of gas mm -hmm. stations now there are three, but in Pokrovsk, every ATB is closed. Done. Wow. Okay. Done. So this, this sounds like the, um, uh, is it the Waffle House? The Waffle House effect. Um, the U.S. government can tell the damage from a hurricane by how many Waffle Houses are open. Yes. Like the, 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 the Greasy Spoon Waffle House chain. Like, for some reason, if they're closed, it's bad. And same kind of thing. Okay. Well, I'm standing wow. here. Guys are all around me now. And they would tell you if they were on camera with me. If ATB is open, everything's okay. If ATB is closed, yeah. we have a problem. You, you, now, okay. if you go back go on the map to Nova, Novogordovka. Nova yeah, Gord you mentioned no, you could see. What is it? I'm talking to a golf camera here. Novogorovka. It's a town just east of Pokrovsk. Yeah, you, you mentioned this yesterday in your video that you could see it burning. Oh, absolutely. And Mirnagrad burning. Wow. So wow. that city, 14,000 people. Just, Grodivka. Huh? Grodivka. Novogrodivka, thank you. Novogrodivka. Just to the east of Pokrovsk, 12, 13 mm -hmm. kilometers. It fell in three days. Mm -hmm. Bakhmut took a year to fall. Mm -hmm. Chasivyar is still half controlled by Ukraine. Novogorodivka yeah. fell in three days. And the concern is that maybe there's like well, my a, understanding that, my a understanding wave of that was that it was as the Ukrainians pulled out, they just over, overran it because the Ukrainians were moving back because, like, hey, we can't hold this any longer. And okay, got, and got out of you time. just made that statement, and I will make this one. And they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it seems pretty clear that it's a pretty desperate uh, scenario there. Okay, um, so tell me about uh, what, what do you anticipate? Can, can uh, General Winter potentially bail them out, or is that just, uh, just pie in the sky? Um, 104 degrees today, winter's not in yeah. sight. Uh, it'll be, there will be a couple more months of decent weather. I was yeah. looking so at the extended it's, it's forecast. Rough. Yeah. We're, we're, we're mid October before rain and cooler weather. Could yeah. I mean, even mud effect. would be wonderful and welcome, right. To, to slow this down. But it, I've been it, in, it just seems like I've been in meetings today, um, I can tell you I was across the river looking at Inogodar today. Mm -hmm. Additionally, right now, 
I'm on the very southern front, one of the most famous battle areas. Um, I can actually say it because when this video is posted, I'll be gone. But I'm just okay. above Robotny right now. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I can hear the explosions in the background. I can see it burning in the distance. Every soldier I've talked to today, even commander level, are saying, Greg, people don't understand this is a drone war. And we mm -hmm. can't yeah. think. That's exactly right. We can't think about bullets, and we can't even think about tactical maneuvers and logical no, thinking and his, right. historical traditions of war. There are drones everywhere. Uh, Prof, I can tell you, this is the first time, and I'll just be honest, Jenny and I have everything for our protection, but this is mm -hmm. the first time in two and a half years of running the front lines on this war that we run our drone detector nonstop. And when we get mm -hmm. out of the vehicle, it's in our pocket. It's in Jenya's pocket right now, standing there. Wow. They're always over us. When, yeah. we, when you're within 25 kilometers of the zero, right. you're in drone territory. Yeah. And then when you move within 10, it's nonstop activity. So yeah. there is an adjustment made. I was talking to some drone operators as well um, and, a, and a unit over in the east. And I asked them a question specifically. I said, please help me understand and I will share it with the world. But is, are the Russian drone operators good or are they just bad? And the mm -hmm. guy looked at me, and this is an expert, and he says, Greg, let me explain the Russian army to you. Don't believe anything you see on the internet. Yes, mm -hmm. they take 95% of their army as a meat wagon, but most mm -hmm. of those soldiers are foreign mercenaries or, or prisoners or from the East. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not They're this, expendable. They're ex Exactly. He says, but their 5% decision makers are really good. Their mm -hmm. drone operators are really good. And then he was showing me some video, and this affects Pokrovsk because the drones are everywhere now. He said, their ability to hide is remarkable to hide their drone operators, to hide their positions. He goes, I know people see the TikToks and the Twitters and these guys just running around and we're dropping stuff. He goes, that's just for fun, man. He says, but listen, they're good at mm -hmm. what they do. Yes, 95% meat wagon, but the 5% highly trained. So don't underestimate them. And it's been a challenge for us to locate these drone positions to counteract them. So that's that's good to understand the factor in what's actually happening. So I know your time is precious because of where you are. And so I'm going to let you go in just a moment. Mm -hmm, no I'll give problem. you the last word. In the meantime, uh, I want to point people to your last video on your channel. And this video will be on yours and mine, right? Yes, what, sir. What we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at a certain time, it'll appear for both his channel and my channel. You can watch it on either. But if you're not subscribed to Greg Terry Experience, uh, he'll show you what's going on. Like right on the ground and the last video is showing you what's actually happening in per cross and you can see it with your own eyes so please check that out if you haven't already okay you know, last thing that you want us to walk away with from this video i think we'll circle right back around to where we started you asked when we began this video for tonight what was noticeably different about per cross or something of that mm -hmm. nature you know what caught yeah. your attention and made you go uh oh or wow when Jane and I came into Pokrovsk and we came around the first corner, we already knew. We already knew. We'd been hearing about it, but we already knew. We know where the kiosks normally are. We know where people are usually at in normal life. In this mm -hmm. culture, in this summer season, people are everywhere. Walking the streets, mm -hmm. eating ice cream, even in the war. It's summer. There were zero people. And we started to notice and said, okay, we already feel it. It's hard to explain. We felt it. 
you could feel the darkness and, and mm -hmm. like fear in the city. We came around the first corner that we come in from the way we were coming into Pacross, and the first thing that hit us, evacuation billboards and the number 0800 da 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 evacuate 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 sir i've been in bakhmut mm -hmm. i've been in chasivyar mm -hmm. i've been on the back side of avdivka i've been in karakova i've been in Kharkiv. all of these places i have never seen an evacuation billboard ever yeah never yeah and so I, I mean, I was shocking. Hear, but hearing the truth, truth is, and, and we need to understand what the truth of the situation is, and not just you know be have our heads in the sand or pie in the sky or whatever. It just so I'm I'm glad to be able to hear firsthand experience, even though I wish it wasn't like this. Bakhmut was not important real estate, but Cross really is. Yeah. And that'll be a significant victory if if or when Putin can take across um so okay he doesn't, so he doesn't have it yet what i'm telling you right now is pacross is a ghost town it is evacuated i know there was a cnn report or cnn that said thirty-eight thousand civilians were still in in pacross mm -hmm. baloney that, that was a few days ago though and it okay. seems like they've been streaming brother out the buses are rolling. Jamie yeah. and I literally witnessed people in their cars with a, a trailer behind them, all mm -hmm. their possessions on it with a tarp over it, and they were loaded in their cars leaving like a caravan. Yeah. So yeah. if that was a few days ago, I am in Ukraine. I just saw it. Uh, I, I would venture to guess there's under 10,000 civilians left in Pakrovs now. Yeah. It's empty. All right. Well, hey, thanks, man. I really hey, appreciate you. that you're taking the time to uh, get out. I mean, I know I'm really interrupting your day and what you're trying to accomplish there, uh, but this is important for people to understand. No, this, is, this is what we really do, Prof. It. And I thank you. And if you guys are here watching on my channel and you haven't subscribed to Professor Curtis Explains UA, please go subscribe because this man brings a viewpoint a lot of times even about American government and understanding government and how it interacts with Ukraine that is vital to, to give you a well-rounded knowledge about Ukraine. So please do that. You know, I will, I'll leave you with this. When I was down today, just across the, the river from Inogodar, commander I was speaking with looked at me point blank and he says, Greg, I know you're on YouTube. I know you work with others. We see what you're doing. We see what the others do. And we want to say thank you. Thank you guys for what you're doing. So, Prof, I pass that message to you. I pass that message to all the YouTube people that watch and support. But this is what he said. He said, thank we're, you we're for, doing telling, what? for telling the truth. <laughs> okay. I mean, we are, truth. but, I mean, I sleep in my warm bed and eat hot meals. I mean, I, I, it, 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 it yeah, feels but man, like. Listen, listen. We we are slowly becoming the only mouthpiece they have. Yeah, and that's that's the reason that I, I got into this, because I was like, where'd the news go? What happened? And believe me, the Ukrainian soldiers are well aware of it, and they are mm -hmm. so deeply appreciative. I had a guy here just come, and I am, and this will be interesting for you, I am currently at a location where we will be dropping within days one of the armored vehicles right here awesome. i'm doing the pre-meeting right now and the soldier with whom we coordinate came up and says greg i have a gift for you and um this is official ukrainian military jacket and he gave it to me and says man you guys stand with us we stand with you but thank you so we passed a message you know to especially to all the viewers mm -hmm. and to those that support and they like and they comment subscribe and they donate Thank you. And that comes directly from the front. Yeah. Well, it's one team, one fight, right? That's it, brother. So, All right. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll talk uh, a little bit later. Yes, sir, Prof. Have a good day. All right. You too. Be safe. Yes, sir. Bye-bye.